Well, welcome to a less than sunny Spain and welcome to the launch of the Yamaha YAMT system. This is the Yamaha automated manual transmission. Now Yamaha say this system is basically built for fun. It's not a system for disabled people to use. It's to actually increase the engagement of riding motorcycles. Now I'm a little bit skeptical on this. Does it make it feel more just like a, a scooter? Does it make it feel like an electric bike? What are the benefits, the pros, the cons of this new system? Well, we're here in Spain, uh, just sort of north of Barcelona, north and inland a bit of Barcelona. Near the Pyrenees, we've got some fantastic twisty roads around the Pyrenees. Unfortunately, the weather's not playing ball, but that doesn't mean we can't test this bike out. So uh, if you're interested or got a remote bit of interest in this new Yamaha, automatic transmission, sorry, automated manual transmission, then uh, settle down, get yourself a cup of tea, and uh, drop the roll the intro. So there's the UK guys getting ready to leave, a bit gutted. I'm not with them and I'm in a separate group. The big question is, I guess, can you still wheelie the bike without a clutch? You certainly won't be able to clutch it up. You won't be able to clutch it up, but you can get it up on the power. And apparently, if you get it up on the power, you can then flip it up through the box quite quickly on the, on the paddles, you know? So pull the brake. It's in neutral. You always have to put, select the first gear yourself. And that's it. It's automatic. Manual. Uh, okay. This is your mode, D mode. D or D plus, okay. Yeah. And then you just twist the throttle and off you go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Similar as that. So physically, the neutral is not between first and second anymore. So the only physical change to the engine is the neutral is at the bottom of the box. So there's no, you know, so the, so the the automatic transmission doesn't have to worry about going between first and second, you know, the gap between first and second, which is neutral. Neutral's at the bottom of the box. So it's da -da 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 all the way down and neutral's at the bottom. So it should mean you get a really nice shift between first and second. So I'll be interested to try that out. Yeah, we had a big old uh, presentation last night and they had some sort of images of the, of the engine with everything working, you know, in the glass case. I'll, I'll put some video of it on the screen. You know, really interesting. And the, and the, this system, only, I think it adds 2.8 kilos, so it doesn't add masses of weight. You know, it's not a really heavy system. Is it going to change gear now? I've got it in the sporty mode, so it's going to hang on to the gears for a bit longer, I guess. There we go, fourth, fifth. I mean, it is very fast. The gear change is very, very quick. And that's another thing that they said last night, you know, it's it's as fast as a really, as fast as you could possibly change yourself, you know, so if, if you're doing the quickest change you could possibly be, do, that's how fast this system is. You know, it's as fast as the end you can physically, the mechanical, mechanical parts can move. So just in town, in the auto mode, and you know, I'm not having to think about changing gear. So it's got an auto mode, it's got an auto sporty, an auto sort of manual, and you've also got a button on the top of the switch gear to put it into fully manual mode, you know, so you're, 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 in, you're in charge of changing gear on the, on the paddles, and it's not just an auto. It is a little bit like, it's a little bit of a, little bit of a clunk as it goes in and out of gear. In, in the auto, if, if I'm honest. You know, it's not as smooth as if you were doing it yourself. So we're coming into the mountains now. I've worked out how to put it into the, let's call it the manual transmission, so not automatic. I'm deciding when to change gear with the paddles. And that is actually much smoother. I don't know why, but the actual shift in mechanism seems smoother when I'm doing that. It's probably because I'm changing a little bit higher up the rev range. Because I was with the auto, fully auto, I was sort of, oh, it seemed quite sort of clunky and it was changing gear when I wouldn't change gear, you know. I'd hang on to the gears a little bit longer, use a bit of engine braking to slow down and you're not getting that when it's obviously changing at lower revs, you're losing that engine braking effect. But actually with the paddles, it's, it's, <laughs> it's quite nice, just, it's 
to go up and down the box. You know, the bike is still, it won't let you do anything silly, so it won't let you like <laughs> flat out go down to first gear. So it's sort of monitoring what you're doing. It won't let you do anything silly as if, you know, which you could do, you know, if it was a completely manual bike, you could do what you want, couldn't you? But it's there in the background, sort of making sure you don't do anything ridiculous. But uh, yeah, in, in that mode, it is much better. But when you're doing the indicator, at the moment, because obviously it's all new to me, when you're trying to do the indicators, and the Yamaha's got this different sort of indicator set up, doesn't it? With the single press thing. And you're trying to do the gears. It seems like quite a lot to think about with your left hand. But I'm sure that's just a, a temporary thing. And once you're used to it, you know, that's not going to be a problem. We'll see how we get on. I think what Yamaha really want to do Obviously, the Yamaha see it as you know a lot of cars are, have got this type of uh, flappy paddles on, and they think it will encourage more sort of younger riders, perhaps out you know as as well with this technology. And this is a big deal for Yamaha. It's not just like a little something they think they. I think really they're seeing this as the future, the future of gear changes for the, the entire sort of Yamaha range. I mean, there is obviously, there's always going to be an option and this will cost you 500 pounds for this uh, 550 on top of your normal MT-09 price. And you do get the keyless ignition though. So it's 550 for the YMT and the uh, keyless ignition. Well, we got a couple of miles of twisties for the rain cone, didn't we? So here are the flappy paddles on the left hand switch gear. Of course, first thing you notice, there's no clutch lever and of course there is no gear lever either. And you've basically got a motor underneath this cover, which is actuating uh, the gear input shaft and it still retains the quick shifter. So the quick shifter is still managing the, the quick shifter element of it, but basically you just got a motor moving the, the actual gear lever. And then round the other side, under this cover, you've got another motor, which is actuating the clutch. So the actual internals of the engine and the gearbox, I think, are, are unchanged. So basically, you've got two motors actuating the gear lever and the clutch, rather than you, so to, to automate the system. But it's weird having to do stuff with your hands. You know, obviously, you've got quick shifters normally, so you wouldn't normally have to touch the clutch anyway, so you wouldn't really be doing anything with your hands. You know, and you'd be doing it with your foot, but I'm having to sort of really think about it with my hand. And I guess that's because it's new, isn't it? I'm not used to it, so I'm really having to think think about changing gear up here. It's not feeling 100%. It's feeling, it's feeling quite natural, surprisingly natural, if I'm honest, but not 100% natural yet. And there's two ways to do it. You get, there's two paddles that are pushing back, or you can just use the front finger and push and pull with the front finger in one motion. Sort of, sort of get it in front of the paddle to change up and then flick it underneath the paddle to change down. So you can do everything with the one finger. Bloody, 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 bloody rain. Bloody, bloody rain. And so this button here changes between auto and manual. So when I pull to a stop, let's put it in first. And the clutch will obviously engage as I stop. So I've got to do anything. And then uh, if I drop it down again, it'll go to neutral and then once you're in the auto you can then use this mode button to change for your normal rider mode as you normally would sport all of that and then clicking that changes from your d plus which is the sporty to the street so i'm going to keep it manual i'm going to keep it manual for now what do you reckon alex Beautiful, mate. Nice, isn't it? I wasn't so keen on like the auto though. It's quite clunky, isn't it? A bit. Yeah. But you get it in the get it in the manual. Have you still got it in the auto? Have you? Have you tried it in the manual yet? No, no. I've just been sitting on D and D. Oh, have you? Yeah. Uh, it's, been, like, it's been a few times mid corner where it's been like, oh, I'm going to change up now. Yeah. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's not yeah. Yeah, yeah. But for the most part, yeah, I've been D D plus and it's been fine. You've been alright with it. Oh, okay. I wonder if the uh, sort of the algorithms which decide when it's going to change gear take lean angle into account so if you sort of got you're in the lean so obviously it's got an IMU this bike so it knows how much it's leaning over does it take that into account as to when it changes gear so if you're leaning over will it sort of hold on to a gear a bit more until the bike stands upright I'll have a word because we've got some Japanese techs over so I'll ask them if 
if lean angle is a decision factor on when the bike's gonna gonna change gear for you so we just stopped at this little place for uh, look at the views over there wow incredible so we just stopped for a little uh, coffee and apparently the rain is here at the uh, the photo point it started raining so got waterproofed up waterproofed well, I've got waterproof, waterproof downstairs <laughs> I've got much downstairs at all so I've donned the waterproofs because it's going to be raining which is bloody such a shame isn't it such a shame bloody rain bloody rain and we just had a chat with one of the Japanese techs and as I thought you know when, you, when you're, you're in the sporty auto it doesn't it's not reading anything from the IMU so it doesn't know if the bike's leaning or not all it's looking at is throttle position speed and obviously revs that's how it's deciding when to change gear it's not looking at lean angle so if you're in the fully sporty you know it doesn't if you're going into a corner to the left and you're just slowing down you know it it, it, it could potentially change gear because it doesn't know you're starting to lean in so obviously and that will then mess up your engine braking and could push you offline so I think if you're really getting a lick on in the sporty mode, you're better off going to the, going to the manual. The auto is just like when you're tired, get you home really. Failure to pay attention while riding could result in death or serious injury. Always concentrate on riding by keeping your eyes and mind on the road. Read the owner's manual. Oh, look at this. Reminds me of the, uh, the Tiger launch in Scotland. Bloody pea suit. I bet that'd be an absolute. I went, oh, I went for the gear lever. That's the first time I went for the gear lever with my foot. I'm actually getting into it. I'm actually quite getting into it now. Uh, it's sort of starting to feel natural because I guess that that's, you know, it's always going to feel a little bit foreign, isn't it, doing this? Originally, when you start riding it, you know, and you're thinking about it, but when you stop thinking about it and it becomes sort of muscle memory, it is actually quite engaging, popping it up and down on the buttons. Because what, what are you missing out? Obviously, you'd have a quick shift to blipper anyway, so you wouldn't be using the clutch, you know, you, you would because you'd have the blipper. So all you're, all you're missing, really, is just moving your foot up and down. How engaging is moving your foot up and down? <laughs> is it more engaging to do it with these buttons than it is to use your foot? Initially I was like, no. But now I'm like, actually, this is actually... I'm starting to sort of get the appeal. But it's so quick and sporty, the change. Now, ba 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 it's... it's there is something to say about that, you know, because like I say, you, you're really, there's a cow in the road. All you're missing is moving your foot. So I'm sort of am coming round to it a little bit, you know, the more you ride it. And I think this is why they've done such a big ride today. 300 kilometre ride is because they've realised that it takes a while for it to become muscle memory. I think on track it could be very good as well because it would definitely be, I think, easier on track. Do you know what it's like when you're hanging off a bike? Obviously, you, you get all your gears done before the corner. You know, you're in the right gear, aren't you? Coming into the corner and everything. But, oh, look at it. Look, look at the view down there. Oh, my word. That is absolutely stunning. But on track, I do think it could be really nice, actually. And I say it's one less thing to to think about and that's why I do love blippers on track because again it's one less thing to think about because with a quick shifter you know you could argue that you've lost a lot of that having to you know blip it manually yourself before you change down there's a lot to be said for that when I ride my hypermotard you've got to be proper look at this tunnel that is dark dark visor might not be a good idea but it is engaging when you ride a bike without a quick shifter blipper and you've got to do it manually you know, it is, it takes some effort, mental effort, you know, to rev match and everything, and it is a skill, and it is engaging to do that. But as, you, as this, this bike comes with a blipper anyway, you haven't got to do that anyway. So all, you, all you're taking away, really, is just moving the gear lever up and down. And you're getting these little buttons to play with instead. I'm not saying I'd buy it, yeah, I'm, still, I'm not fully sold. 
but it's starting to make sense now as a as an engagement feature you know, rather than a disability feature for people with disability actually to increase the engagement maybe wow look look at it around here it's just amazing i think also i think they've put a fair bit of effort into getting these switches in the right place you know so they're in the right place for when you're being sporty when you're holding the bars you can flick that one back and forth i think they're in a better position than say on the africa africa twin for using when you're riding sportily and they're easy to get to you know you've got a very light touch on the bars and you're hanging off even your, your hands at you know, that sort of angle you can still get to them you can still use them Look at that view it won't come out very well on the gopro but there's an incredible backdrop bikes are filthy we just had a nice bit of lunch in there we had uh, half a cow <laughs> and a potatoes worth of chips yeah not bad little lunch not bad little lunch there very meaty but see the way that waggles that seems to move a lot doesn't it? look at that quite a lot of movement in that switch gear which i'm not but when you're riding you, you don't notice that at all and I suspect if I ask one of the Japanese techs, they say that's there for a reason to sort of damp, damp your inputs on the buttons. <laughs> or some such nonsense. i will chatting to the UK guys, to Al Fagan and Carl Stevens. You know, they've been getting it up <laughs> and going up through to fourth on the buttons, up to fourth gear on the back wheel. So you can wheel it with some practice. I'm not, I'm not going to be, I don't think I'm going to be able to wheel it with my big bulk. But because neutral's at the bottom and you've not got to go from first to second through neutral, it's very quick between first and second. So if you did, were to sort of give it a big hoik and get it up in first, then you could go in into second, it would stay up because it's very fast. Well, we finally got some uh, dry roads and twisties. This is what we've been waiting for all day long. Oh, second as we go in here. about roads like this. Well oh, fellas, sorry can't wait for too long. I've got a gearbox to work. In the manual mode that is not taking away any engagement from flying through those twisties. It's not. It's not. That isn't taking it. All I'll be doing is moving my foot up and down. That's all I'm losing but I'm doing it on my fingers instead. Oh, so we're tightening up a bit now so we can start to drop it into between second and third and I'm sure you know there'll be people saying why <laughs> why am I why have you done this why are you ruining motorcycles and it's it's an option and it's not ruining it it is an option forget the automatic side I don't like that I don't like the way it changes gear I don't like even how harsh it is on the gearbox I mean, it's great, I suppose, when you've had enough and you just want to get it home. But it's all about this manual changing with the paddles. That is what this is all about, really. It's not about making this bike automatic. And that is brilliant. See, so it won't go into second now. Looks, I'm going too slow. So it won't let you do whatever you want. It's not letting me go to second because the revs are too low. It's saying, no, you go, your revs are too low. You'll stall if you go to second. <laughs> oh, I've stalled it. Stalled it. <laughs> stalled it with a burnout. You can still do a burnout. You can still do a burnout. It did stall, though. It did stall after doing that. 
Well, we've just stopped um, and look at this. I don't know what this dam is called, but it's just absolutely stunning here. Absolutely stunning. I mean, uh, that, that is such a view. I probably won't come out on YouTube, but that is incredible. And if you want, if you really, really want, the whole thing sh is shaking as that lorry's coming over. It's quite disconcerting. But you can even do a bit of bungee in. 122 metre free fall bungee, anybody? I'll tell you what, it's not for me. <laughs> Amazing. So we are now on the way back to the hotel. I think we've got a little bit of a ride to do, but it looks like the weather could be coming in again, and we've the roads are still wet again. The roads are wet again. We had a little reprieve of dry road. This fellow in front is called Jesus. That always makes me chuckle as well. Got Jesus with us. If it's raining on Jesus, we didn't have any hope. Even Jesus has bought his waterproofs. But yeah, the more you use this system, the more it becomes second nature and the more reward you get from it. When you're thrashing around these twisties, it is still very engaging. This, this bike isn't like a scooter now, you know? It's really not. You know, I've been skeptical of this and I don't think it's perfect, but I think it's nigh on. I don't, I'm not so keen on the automatic mode, but the engagement is certainly there. Look at this. course with this system you can change down with the throttle open full throttle knock it down a, a couple of gears while the throttle is wide open that is that is cool that is cool a squadron of mts <laughs> look at this oh this is just unbelievable. Whee, that's tight. Playing in the mountains on a YMT. So we are back at the hotel. In typical fashion, it's now dry. So we spent all day riding around in the rain. We come home and it's dry. But it's been an amazing day. The roads around this area, absolutely incredible. I never realised that East Pyrenees, well, I guess any, any mountain roads are fantastic, aren't they? But it's been a fantastic day riding this machine. I, I came into this really quite sceptical as to whether I, you know, I'm a bit old school, you know, I've been riding for 20 years, you know, so I'm used to double declatching and you know, blipping as you downshift and everything. So it, it, this, this, I came into this quite sceptical thinking, mm, I'm not sure, you know, Yamaha was selling this as an engaging proposition. So more engaging than using a gear lever. Now, I'm not sure it's more engaging than using a gear lever, but when you've got it in the manual and you're going up and down on the paddles and you're going around some twisty roads, it is engaging. So I don't think you've lost too much. I think it's 95% as engaging as using a gear lever. I mean, because it's got the quick shifter anyway, all you're missing is just a gear lever going up and down. That, that's the only thing you're missing from you know, the normal, well, normal bike, let's call it. But my only criticisms with it is when you go into the fully automatic mode, uh, because when you change gear, it's just using the quick shifter. And if you've ridden bikes with quick shifters, you know sometimes then you need to use the clutch. They don't work 100% of the time in 100% of the conditions. So just to be nice to the engine sometimes. Say your, your, your chain gets a bit loose, for example. Sometimes quick shifters don't work at the lower rev ranges 
Obviously on this, you've got no clutch to sort of ease it and, and do a different option. So the quick shifter can get a little bit clunky and knocky. Certainly around town, you know, when the bike gets really hot or your chain goes off. It wasn't too bad today, but I think that was what I found a bit on and off with the auto stuff. So I'd be a little bit worried maybe long term that the gearbox wasn't taking a little bit of a hit because it's just relying on the quick shifter. And uh, normally I'd switch back to using the clutch, you know, in that situation, obviously you can't do that. I think ideally it'd be nice to have a clutch here and have a gear lever as well. So you could have this as an option, but then I think you'd, it would just get, the clutch lever would get in the way of the actual paddles and you'd end up not using it anyways. I mean, would I buy an MT-09 with this system? Because you can't clutch up and do any wheelies and I'm a bit of a hooligan, I know I probably wouldn't get it on this bike, but I would certainly consider it on something like the Tracer. And of course it will come on the Tracer next year, I'm sure of it. But overall, very, very impressed. I'm not a complete convert, but I can certainly see the appeal. And I think for younger riders, they might really like this system. It's only because I'm old school that, you know, it's, I'm, not, I'm not against all change, but I like to have the option to use the clutch sometimes. I think every manufacturer should have an automatic bike like this, because this is a, if you've got any sort of disability, of course, this is an absolute game changer. And every manufacturer should have one of these, not just your DCTs and your fuddy-duddy bikes. You know, you, every manufacturer should offer this system. But overall, fantastic, really impressed. I'm looking forward to trying it again in the UK, but I think today we've had such a good ride, such a long ride. And I think you need to have a decent ride on it because you need to wait until it's sort of muscle memory just flicking up and down through the buttons because it seems a little bit, I wouldn't say awkward, but obviously different. So you have to wait until that's muscle memory until you really gel with it. Through towns when you've also got to start working indicators and buttons, you know, your left hand does get busy. But I think again, that's just a case of getting used to the system. But overall, incredibly impressed, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. And uh, I will probably borrow this a bike with this system on it again, back in the UK when these are available. I think these are going to hit the dealers very, very soon. I think end of October they're starting to come through, and I think the price of it with the system is ten six fifty, so still very reasonable, five hundred fifty pounds, and you get the keyless system as well. So overall, impressed, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. So see you next time, guys. Thanks very much.